Hey guys, welcome back to episode 2. Where we left off in episode 1, we just got this simple aircraft, the old reliable, finally in the game. So today we're going to focus on going through the aircraft editor and showing you the process of which you can edit these uh, CFGs in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So back in the day, you used to have to click on these in each individual CFGs. Um, back in FSX, it was just the aircraft CFG and you'd have to manually um, input all these numbers and uh, open flight simulator retest to make sure it was good close it retest it and it just wasn't very proficient so luckily for us Microsoft flight simulator released a aircraft editor which works in game which is much more reliable so uh, let's jump to it so we're gonna go, go ahead and go back and go to our world map uh, we selected our aircraft already we need to update the small thumbnail in order for it to show here we just have the large thumbnail right now and uh, let's go ahead and choose a flight line and uh, load up in the game. Diamond Alpha Sierra X -ray okay, now that we are in game, we'll go ahead and select ready to fly here. As you can tell, it loaded us up in our cockpit, which we can't see anything because we don't, haven't worked on any of the interior. We'll go to exterior. You can uh, kind of hear the sound here if I turn it up just a little bit and it is using the sound pack of the default DA62 as you can see there's some motion here as well so everything it's using right now is from the DA62 so actually let's go ahead and do this right now if I release my brakes and we go to take off it's going to act just like the DA62 would Now since this is using the DA62 flight profile, the uh, aerodynamics are already pretty good, but we're going to go in depth and start manually editing these. Um, but as you can tell, she gets in the air just like the DA62 would, and uh, she can fly. So let's go ahead and get back on deck. Very rough landing. <laughs> um, but okay, so up here in death mode. We have this new thing if we go over to uh, tools that is called aircraft editor. Let me go ahead and turn that sound down now. Now aircraft editor when it pops up allows you to do plenty of things. You can uh, start editing these CFGs, the, the general information, the weight and balance, contact brakes, fuel, geometry, aerodynamics, flight tuning, autopilot, reference speeds, interactive points, flaps, engines, lighting, cockpit, and your cameras. So let's go ahead and start right here at the beginning. So we finally get to change our name here. We're going to change the ATC type, which is the type of aircraft, to a uh, simple 3D model. I'm not quite sure what type of aircraft this is. And uh, for the model, we're just going to call this Old Reliable. Okay, now we can uh, modify the uh, pilot info. You know, what kind of pilot models does it want to uh, use in here? So right now we're currently just using the default, uh, you know, pilot, co-pilot, instructor, and animation set, as well as the uh, idle, idle pose propeller, which um, I know it says propeller in here, but it's just talking about the idle pose of the animation of the pilot itself. And so you, you can actually go up in here and uh, start editing, um, what animations specifically if you end up making animations for them and uh, insert them into the game. Uh, now we can say what kind of uh, stuff we want, services available for it. So by default the DA62 had a fuel truck, small pushback, a marshaller. Um, we can go ahead and just add like a ground power unit to this thing. Uh, they also have jetway pushback and catering truck. Um, and then also up here I mean down here uh, we got the DA62 uh, uh, sample and that is the name of this so we can actually go to global now click and change the title of this to old reliable 
you can actually, if you have multiple folders, panels, and sounds and textures, you can start adding them here. And what this is, uh, if you're familiar with the old system, this part of the aircraft editor is simulating your uh, flight sim setups. So back in the CFG, as you can tell, let me open that up here you have flight sims and you'd have to edit each individual one of these and let's say you had a different model or a different texture pack or a different library you would uh, end up putting those in here um, but by using this uh, tool we can all do it in the game um, so yeah if we end up doing this more in the future we can add some more textures by just hitting this little plus sign here adds a new library we can put a new name in it you know an old reliable with uh, with floats or uh, something like that so we'll go ahead and remove that for now uh, and then you can finally put your aircraft des description. So uh, this aircraft was made during the Microsoft Flight Simulator dev series. Uh, is it air traffic? Is it user selectable? So these are other options that you can go ahead and select. Uh, and then also in work in progress, you can uh, start putting, you know, this is your first pass on it. It's finished. Uh, so you can assign, let people know in-game uh, what kind of draft it's in. Then there's a UI setting where you can uh, put even more stuff in here. Once again, we're going to put the manufacturer's base 3D model. Doesn't have to match, as you can tell, because I can't remember what I put up here. Um, oh, I put simple 3D model. It's not going to matter. Uh, type old reliable. And then variation, this is just your base library. Now we can type its role, a twin engine prop. Obviously that was a DA-62, this is a single engine prop. And uh, this is not made by a Sobo, this is made by Aerosaur. You can also uh, put your thumbnail file in here if you have a, a, um, a, a thumbnail path. But uh, I like to use the uh, other options, which is just, you know, going into the model itself, going into texture, and replacing the thumbnails. Uh, it's, it's a much easier option. Um, and then as you start making other libraries and you have more texture folders, you can just do it that way. So we're going to drop our certified ceiling to about 15,000. Um, and our max range on this thing, let's just go 1,000. And like I said, when you start... I know a lot of you guys are going to be modeling real-life aircraft with real-life parameters. Uh, you can just pull these up on Wikipedia or whatever you're using as your primary source and start plugging these uh, numbers in that way. Uh, we'll do an eight-hour flight and our fuel burn. Let's do uh, 65. You can go into ACT, which is your call sign and all that. So do we have an ID enabled? Yeah, sure. We have an ID enabled. We are Aerosaur. 69 everyone likes the number 69 we are not heavy and then uh parking types let's say we can uh let's park at the ramp okay as you can see there's multiple options here gate dock um dock for like a uh, water aircraft and then uh parking codes you can also uh, change your id color your id font your airline type uh, so there's plenty of options in here. So once, you, once you're done with one tab or uh, even just one parameter in a tab and you want to test it, let's go ahead and hit File, Save and Resync. And what that's going to do is it's going to save your uh, CFG inputs that you just put into the game and it's going to resync the aircraft into the game and you'll actually see the aircraft kind of redrop into the game like this. And once it's redropped, you're ready to go on. So uh, let's go on to Weight and Balance. Now, as you can see here with weight and balance, if I move this to the side, it will display a uh, the current weight and balance. So as you can tell, we got some uh, solid red, which are those engines of the DA-62. And the center of gravity point is exactly where we placed it in Blender, which is good news because now it's centered on the wing. And then we need to mess with our wheels just a little bit. As you can see, and those will uh, be in the uh, contact points tab when we get there. Uh, so for now, once again, I'm kind of making this up as we go because I don't even know what type of aircraft this is. It's a pretty simple looking thing. So we'll just do 4,000 for its max weight and 3,800 for empty. Uh, and then uh, you can also change your reference datum position. Uh, if you want, so let's say that you're, uh, 
um, your center of gravity is too low or too high or you got some weird bird where sometimes the center of gravity does not fall center to the aircraft like we put it in blender you can actually move this thing up or down um, and what's really cool on most of these tools you have this little gizmo icon here and if you hit the gizmo you can actually go in here and move it up or down left or right forward or back and then uh, save and resync and it will reposition those uh, weight boxes Um, and then uh, there's also four limits and aft limits. Uh, we're not going to really mess with those on this uh, one because it, it looks pretty set as it is already. And like I said, I'm not going into uh, the realism factor on this. Now we can uh, adjust our payloads. And these are the things that you can adjust during your, uh, um, when you're at the main screen and you go to the hangar uh, right before you fly. So looks like we got a, uh, let me stretch this out just a wee bit so we can read these a little better. We have our pilot, our front passenger, our middle passenger, some bags. Um, so we can go ahead and add or remove. Once again, there's this little plus sign here if you want to add payloads and types. Uh, like, for example, my glider had a bunch of water ballast, and so we would add water ballast to the payload, which people could adjust. And uh, then you, 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 uh, you can start messing with those. So we'll get rid of some things. Like, I don't think this plane's going to have, you know, a bunch of middle passengers, probably one middle passenger and uh, one rear passenger. And uh, yeah, you can just do that. So when people in the game, if you want to adjust weight loads for those passengers, you can go ahead and put those in. So now we're going to move on to the big one, contacts and brakes. And contacts are points in which the aircraft makes contact with anything solid in the game. So as you can see here, it's made for the DA-62, so we got contact points for the wings clear out here. So honestly, if I was flying low and I turned right now, I would start scraping at this point where obviously we have, you know, a couple feet here before it actually touches the aircraft model. So we need to really start adjusting these things. And uh, what's really cool about the contact point editor is you can click on each contact point and you can determine what type it is what type it is. Is it a wheel? Is it a scrape point? A skid? A float? A water rudder? A ski? Or a prop? Um, and you can also assign a sound ID to it. So basically when it gets touched, what's it doing? You know, in this case it's the wheel. When it touches the ground, it's going to make the center wheel contacts the ground sound. You know, if it's uh, the wing scraping on the ground, you want to put, you know, a left wing scrape or a right wing scrape so that the, the sound ID goes to the right um, headphone. Um, so yeah, let's, let's start messing around with these. Like I said, they got gizmos, which makes this way easy. Uh, so we'll go comp contact point zero, and if we go ahead and click gizmo here, we can see that it is the front center wheel. And before we do anything, let's go ahead and jump into developer camera. Developer camera is real nice because you can use W, A, S, and D to move around. And there's also a developer camera settings in which you can adjust the transition seat, the speed, and the rotation speed, which I'm going to turn the rotation up just a little bit. And we can move that aside. So now we can move, and if you hold Alt on the keyboard and uh, um, left click, you can go ahead and rotate. Once again, maybe my, tr my transition speed is a little slow. There we go. And then you can press F to go down and R to go up. So what's really beneficial about the developer camera is you can get really close to things that you do and then when you hit file up here save and resync it won't reposition your camera to the rear of the aircraft it will put you exactly where you were so as you can see here our contact point on our tire is a little low because our tire is actually in the ground so we're going to move that down right now file save and resync And then as you can tell, this little box around it is highlighting yellow. And uh, if it's going in and out of yellow and white, that means you have some kind of weight issue on that position. Uh, when it's, the box is yellow, it's telling you that there is weight on that contact point. Um, so that's good news. And uh, as you can see here, we're still in the ground just a little bit, so we'll put it down just a little bit more. File, save and resync. Okay, now we're a little bit above the ground. Uh, like I said, this is a very touchy thing, but luckily for us, we got this gizmo tool, which makes it a lot easier than manually editing all these points and uh, trying to adjust the height manually.
Okay, and that looks pretty good for the front wheel. And uh, at this point, we'll move on to uh, the wings. So we'll skip the other wheels for now, just so I can kind of show you each individual uh, one. Uh, we'll go to this scrape point, click the gizmo to see where it is. That is the uh, prop point. So we're going to go ahead and slew around and move this into the prop. And then if we slew back, it looks like it's just a little bit low, so we'll raise that up, go back and forth. Now we're too far in, we'll come back out. So that is if the, this uh, nose cone ends up contacting the ground. So we're going to go ahead and file, save, and resync. Okay, and like I said, the aircraft reloaded since we're in developer camera. Our camera didn't reset, which is really awesome. Okay, let's move on to another one. We'll go to contact point four, which is a scrape, another scrape point. Let's see what that is. Yeah, we won't mess with that for now, but we could assign that to this bar right here. Um, go to contact point six, which if I gizmo here, see where that is. That is the wing point. So. I'm going to show you a, a little cool hack here that we can do with the wings. So we're going to go ahead and move this in to where we think it is. Rotate. Obviously that's in too much. About right there. Now we're going to move it back. We can go to the side cam. Then we can go ahead and move that up. And if you see how the plane's bouncing, if we don't want that, we can just pause the game, okay? <laughs> so if you're really trying to get fine-tuned and this thing's shaking a little bit, you can go ahead and pause the game. And I think that looks pretty good. So what we can do here, which is really nice, we can go File, Save and Resync. Okay, and... Uh, what we have here is we have a, uh, our gizmo positions. So we have long, longitude, latitude, and a vertical. So obviously we got the long, the lat, and the vert. And so a good easy way to do this, once we go into contact point seven, just to make sure they match 100% correct, you can go to six, you can grab the, uh, the long, which we want to be the same position, go to point seven, paste that in here. Go to six, we want to go to the vertical now. Copy that with control C, and then paste that in here with control V. Then we go back here, and we don't want this to be the exact uh, longitude, or I mean latitude, because that's negative. So that's negative on this side of the wing. We want to make it positive exactly. So we go to point seven, we paste that, and we get rid of the negative. File, save and resync. Okay, so now we have our wing set on this side, and if we have, if I did it right, we have our wing set on this side. And uh, that is because we just basically copied and they were 100% in sync, and so you don't have to worry about, you know, randomly putting it down just a little bit too far. So now each side of the wing is going to contact the ground in the same manner. Okay, uh, let's move on, see what else we can do here that we could show. Looks like just a bunch more of scrape points. So we're going to go ahead and uh, create a new scrape point, okay? So what we can do here is we can click on one that is near already. And I think that was number three. Yep, which was our propeller. And what we can do here is we can hit duplicate. And that will duplicate a new point to point 12. And then we can go ahead and click point 12. Now this is important. You got to make sure that you're gizmoing point 12 because the gizmo is currently set to point uh, four. So what we need to do is we need to go point 12 and then hit gizmo again. Now we can move that point and you're going to want to move it to the maximum of the arc of the propeller. So imagine this thing spinning, it's a giant diameter. You could technically, um, instead of dragging it sideways, just drag it down. If you set your propeller right so you have a good visual there of kind of where it is. I say this thing's spinning, I'm assuming it's hitting about right here. But just to be fair, we're going to put this uh, point right here um, but in a perfect world you'd want it up and down 
And then uh, if you look at it, it's too far forward a little bit. We'll move that back. And uh, that looks pretty good. About right there. And we'll go ahead and assign point 12 as a scrape point. We'll change that to propeller. And we'll ch and then uh, obviously if you if you look at the uh, sounds it makes here, um, I'm not sure if it has a prop sound. I think if we file save and resync since we've changed it to propeller, um, it will have a different set of sound IDs. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that, so we'll go ahead and check. So it doesn't. So in this point, uh, a good sound would probably be an auxiliary scrape. Um, and it would just sound like you're scraping a door uh, over and over and over again as this thing's rotating. But now if you got too close to the ground, or let's say you have a, uh, a nose landing and this thing scrapes the ground, you're actually going to hear it now. And like I said, you'd want to probably put it directly below and directly above. Um, that way, uh, when, you, when you're coming in, you have nice two contact points up here, not just kind of random skewed to the side. Um, and that's something you can change with your animation before you export or even, you know, right now you could go back into Blender and change that prop so it's uh, directly up and down. So let's go ahead and move on from contact points. Like I said, I'm not going to be delving into the whole system here and making all the individual changes because this will probably take a couple hours if you do that kind of thing. And we'll go to fuel. So in our, uh, did we miss something? Yeah, we did. So we have summary up here. Um, where you can attach your uh, static CG height if you want to change the height of it. We can change our gear system type, which will also affect the uh, sound ID of that. Um, we'll keep it electrical. And uh, do you want the gears to be locked on ground? In this case, we don't have uh, um, uh, gears going in and out of the plane, but we'll, we'll be showing that later on in the series with a different model. Uh, you can also uh, change your full, full max speed, full steering. You can change uh, a couple of those... Uh, flight model uh, changes here and now you can also go to uh, brakes uh, you know are parking brakes available uh, yeah they are available can you auto brake so when you touch the ground does it automatically start braking um, what's your tow brake scale um, right now it's at 0 0.6 we could even put that to 1 so that just changes the effectiveness of the tow brake so if I change that to 5, you would stop on a dime. If I change that to 0.2, it would take you a while, and you would roll down the flight line really slow as you held the brakes. Um, and then there's also a differential. And what's really neat is if you uh, highlight over each one of these, let's say you don't know what the hydraulic system scalar does, if you uh, drag your cursor over there, it will tell you, you know, on brakes dependent on the hydraulic system, it's the ratio of the hide system to the max brake hide pressure. So if you don't know what it is, just hover your mouse over it and it will explain that to you. And, and that's really cool because in this old system it didn't do any of that kind of stuff. Um, so let's move on from that finally into uh, fuel. So in fuel you can have your summary, you know what kind of fuel does this thing use. We'll keep it at octane 100. Does it have an electric pump, a manual transfer pump, an engine driven pump? Uh, you can change all that. Um, you can also start changing uh, exa exactly where the fuel is stored. So what, where is the fuel stored? Well, we'll, we'll have it in the uh, right main here and the left main, just like the uh, DA62. And uh, you can even add uh, more. So, you know, default fuel tank selector 2. And, and these are all based on how you uh, select the engine for uh, your uh, auto start. And then you can start going into each individual fuel tank, and then you can set exactly what position it's at. And like I said, if you, if you moved this across, you'll actually see where they have positioned all these tanks. And just like before, there's nice gizmo tools. So you can click on a gizmo, you can see where it's at, and you can move it up and down. Um, and then you can start assigning your pumps. You know, we have a pump one and pump two. And what they do is they pull from the left auxiliary and they put it into the left. Um, and it transfers fuel at this rate. So you, you can really start adding pumps and removing and uh, getting this fine tuned and nice. And like you said, you couldn't see the plus, but if you scroll down to the bottom, you got a plus, so you can add more uh, fuel transfer pumps. So move on to geometry. This is a big one. So this kind of tells you, this kind of tells you what the aircraft looks like in the air and Microsoft Flight Simulator is very smart 
So it's going to use these calculations to basically define your flight model. So if you do this extremely accurate and you really work on getting this done the right way, your aircraft should fly the way it should fly. Um, depending on the model, like this, this is something that's not even realistic, but if we set up the geometry on this thing right, uh, it, should, it should fly exactly how this model would uh, intend to fly. So we'll go ahead and go into wing here. And you can change your your uh, your wingspan, your area. So we're going to go ahead and change our wingspan. It's at 47.8 feet. Um, I'm assuming it's around 40 feet instead. So we'll file, save, and resync. So we're getting close there. Not quite 40. Probably uh. 38 and a half and like I said what's really nice if you're working on a real aircraft you can get all these uh, numbers from Wikipedia just make sure that your model when you've gone through the whole blender pop process on that one meter by one meter scale box that you're able to uh, um, match it to the same scale as it would be in real life I think that was maybe a little bit too much there as I was talking or just right. Okay, that looks um, fair enough for today's work. So we'll go ahead and now we'll move the height of the wings. So I believe, let's see, position apex vertical. You can uh, start changing that. So we'll change that to, let's see, it's at negative one right now. Let's go ahead and pump that up to about four see what it does now our wings are higher probably too high yeah way too high um, so we'll drop that down to uh, about three Okay, not quite there. So we'll do uh, 2.5, and before I save and resync, we'll work on something else because I'm pretty sure that's going to line up exactly where it is. So as you can see here, the wings start to curve as well. So we want to get rid of that curve because this is a very flat-winged aircraft. Um, so if you don't know what it is, you can always go ahead and uh, look here, um, and it will explain kind of what it is. And even me, I'm not quite sure exactly what this is. I think this is your probably dihedral. Change that to zero and see what exactly changes on the wings. Yep, so now we got our flat wings here. And uh, they're lining up pretty good at this point, probably just a little bit higher than 2.5. So 2.7 and then at this point we can probably move on to something else for the tutorial sake so we're going to go on to the uh, fuselage as you can tell it's tr it's trying to tell you that it thinks the fuselage is about this big which I think on the DA62 uh, that's a that's pretty fair um, so we'll move on to the uh, fuselage but you can also work with the winglets flag you know if you has winglets um, you can start changing the, the horizontal tails on the wing or uh, in the back there so as you can see here it's not quite matching up so that's something we'd want to do and especially move this top uh, elevator down to where the elevators actually are on the uh, vertical tail I mean sorry the, the horizontal tail let's go ahead and do that just so she uh, she's flying right so we'll go ahead and change the position vertical to and I think that's pretty lined up with our center of gravity point, and you can always see because if you look, it's probably smack dab in the middle. Now these white boxes, to explain these a little bit, these are just references. This is just telling you, compared to your CG point, which is uh, 0, 0, 0, which we set it at, um, where uh, things would fall. 
So it looks like it's snap dab in the middle of these uh, white box here. So we're going to go ahead and probably just change the uh, uh, vertical to zero. File, save and resync. So now if we look here, our tail is falling in the right spot. It's just uh, not thick enough. And these are things that you're obviously going to spend a lot of time in here fine tuning this. Um, so let's go ahead, like I was saying, go into our fuselage. So right now, it's pretty thick. That, that orange um, diameter is our fuselage. So we need to probably shrink that in half. So let's go ahead to fuselage. We'll change our uh, diameter down to probably about 2.5. File, save and resync. And that is looking a little bit more accurate. Obviously it can be a little bit more of a tighter adjustment there. Um, and we might even be able to lift that up just quite, just a little bit. Uh, but we'll go ahead and change that because you can always change your gizmo center of it. Um, if you don't like the way it falls, if it's too low, it's too high. Um, but for the sake of the tutorial, we'll probably drop that to 2. And uh, we're going to change our length to about 20. File, save and resync. So now if we're looking around, we have our fuselage. It is probably around the right length, maybe a little bit longer, but it's too far forward. So let's go ahead and turn that gizmo on this time and drag this thing back. A couple feet, file, save and resync. Okay, and now we can make that thing longer, probably back to 25 feet, and we're going to drop it down just a wee, wee bit. File, save and resync. Okay, and I say that's pretty fair. Um, for the tutorial, we got from the tail up to the nose right there, and uh, we're wrapping around pretty well. I could probably move it higher and increase the diameter of the fuselage a little bit more. Um, but for the sake of the tutorial, once again, we're going to uh, leave that as is. Move on to the next section. So aerodynamics, which is really awesome, will display how aerodynamics are working in flight. So that's something you're probably not going to be touching on the ground too much. However, you can start adjusting a lot of things in here. You can change your pitch rates your uh, delta elevator, your flaps, your spoiler, um, drag, side forces, pitch moments. So these are a lot of things that you're probably going to be want to test in the air, which we'll kind of jump to here later on. And then uh, we'll go to flight tuning. So these, I like to leave a lot of them at default, especially if you find a base model. Let's say you're making a uh, another uh, uh, alternative Cessna uh, class. You know, find a good Cessna model that you could use as a base and put those CFGs in here instead of the DA62 at the very beginning um, and replace those before you start getting into this whole aircraft editor. Then you can really start fine tuning it with a very good base to begin with. In this case, we're working with the DA62, which is a twin engine. It probably wasn't the best base to start out with this thing. We could have used something like the Cessna 152 um, to work out with, um, but you know, for the sake of tutorial, like I said, I'm not going for uber realism here. I'm just kind of showing you the basis so you can uh, take the rope and run with it yourselves. Uh, but basically, as you can see here, you got scalar and effectiveness, which in a layman's term here, which is pretty simple, they're adjusting the power of things. So you got your elevator effect effectiveness. If you put that to two, it would work at 200%, what the elevator usually does, three, 300%. Uh, and then if you work on drag scalars, you know, it's working on three times the drag, two times the drag that it normally would get do. So you can really start messing with these uh, um, uh, scalars and effectiveness in here and get this thing to stall right, turn right, turn faster, turn slower, 
um, how it maneuvers in air. Now we get to the autopilot, and autopilot is a rough one. This is going to take something that takes a lot of time. You're going to basically turn on your auto AI control here and uh, <laughs> test it and test it and test it over and over and over again because a lot of these uh, new models that we're making um, from the community, the autopilot just isn't working right. So this is something that you really need to spend some time with working on the control, you know, how much uh, the pilot can turn the plane, how much he can throttle, you know, you can only do 10% at a time or can he go full 100. Uh, so these are things that you really need to f finite and fix in flight and uh, make sure it's working as good as it can be so that the pilot's not nosing down and crashing onto the flight line instead of landing smoothly. You can also set all these uh, references and you can do an auto max bank which uh, automatically changes depending on the airspeed, which is really nice. I always turn that on with my models. I haven't had an issue with it yet where uh, it reads wrong. And then you can also put a, a bunch of stuff into here for references for that auto autopilot. And we'll probably dive deeper into autopilot when we uh, get to a more working model and a working state here. Now you can have reference speed. So you can change your stall speed, your cruise speeds, your max indicated speed. Um, I would say this thing probably doesn't fly at 205, more like about 170. And then uh, it probably stalls at a much less speed, probably about 55. And like I said, you want to find all these numbers on Wikipedia online to match your project as realistic as it can. Now let's move on to interactive points. Obviously this one does not have any interactive points. However, you can add these points so I can kind of show you what they do. There's an unknown point, which uh, a lot of people use unknown points with SimConnect and various APIs uh, to uh, use special functions. There's also a main exit, a cargo exit, an emergency exit, a gas trap, a ground power unit, an air start unit. Now these are points that don't get confused like main exit don't get confused if you're making a jet or something with a canopy that that is the canopy that will not work so there is separate animations that you're going to have to do and separate things to get that canopy to work so just because you have a main exit here don't expect to hit the main exit button in the game and uh, it's going to magically work that's not how this thing works this is more for like a, a big airliner like a cargo aircraft and you have you know a cargo exit and you open up that cargo door in the back so that they can start unloading your car cargo. A lot of this deals with the, um, um, at the very beginning, the general here, what, what services are available and where they're going to park next to the aircraft uh, for those interactive points where they actually plug the APU into the aircraft and do all that kind of stuff. Now we'll move into flaps here. Obviously this aircraft has some flaps. It's saying that it has flap positions at 0, 20, and 42. You can also go negative where you can move those flaps negative. Um, and this is going to be very helpful once we finally get this thing animated so you can see the flaps move at various degrees um, depending on what you put here and uh, you can assign blowout speeds, damage speeds, extended time uh, what kind of system it is, once again hydraulic, manual, pneumatic now let's go to engine, engine is a good one because this is a great example where we have two engines where we only need one so what we're going to do here is we're going to go to general we're going to keep it at a piston engine with a 1.0 fuel scalar and uh, we'll go ahead and set a master ignition switch why not and this is going to probably be a electric start aircraft I would assume and go ahead and just remove one engine we don't need it and uh, file save and resync Okay, and now that we have one engine, this is going to be where your power is deriving from. So we'll go ahead and turn on that gizmo. And if we move it here, and uh, like I said, you're moving it to the center of the aircraft. So you might as well on the lateral, just put zero. And once you make that change in here, you don't have to save and resync. It will move to zero uh, for your reference. As you can tell, that's direct smack in the center. And then this is your engine, not your propeller. So you're not going to be wanting to put this thing right up here, you know, where your power's flowing from. You're going to, it, it deals with weight loadout as well. So you want to make sure this is exactly in the center of where your engine on your model is going to be. Uh, in this case, we'll probably drop it a little bit lower. I would assume the engine's probably sitting around right there. And you can always match these with the real specs once again. And we'll go ahead, and I made that too big. 
drag that thing back out here. And to uh, rescale that, it's just this little uh, tick right here. You can just drag it up and down. Um, and then you can start changing how many props it has. You know, uh, in this point, we have propeller type, constant speed, how many blades we got. We got two, not three. Um, and you can really start adjusting each individual thing on here. You know, the gear reduction ratio, if you know all these. And it's, it's really hard when you start making an aircraft for the first time trying to find a lot of these variables because a lot of them aren't available online. So the best thing I've found is, like, especially in my glider community project, I reached out to the community. People have really flown these aircraft, so they could really tell me these things. And so your best bet if you start working on an aircraft and you're really trying to get nitpicky with it and make sure this thing's ready, for example, like a payware project, um, find, find some real world experience that can sit down with you and really give you a lot of these numbers that you can't find online. So we're going to go ahead and leave that as is and save and resync because we did make some changes to that engine because it's still sitting over here. And now let's go ahead and let me show you disabled controls. You can disable mixture, uh, parking brake, propeller, um, just a few things there on the, the engine itself. So we'll go to lighting. So lighting tells you what kind of lights you have available in your aircraft. So if you go to light zero, we have some nav lights, um, beacon lights, you know, uh, landing lights, taxi lights, glare shield, ambient lights, cabin lights. Um, and so once again you can use that gizmo and you can change exactly where these lights are falling and that they will animate in game so if we change these place them on the wing and you could probably still use the same exact position from the contact point um, but I would assume knowing this aircraft it's probably going to fall probably around right here for that, those nav lights um, and you can go ahead and uh, save and resync that and when you go into night and you pop those lights on, they will start you know, flashing for the strobes and uh, glaring uh, at night. So this isn't something you have to animate in Blender. You're just going to have to make the placeholder, you know, the nice glass look. And then uh, go ahead and drag your light into that area where the bulb is. And then uh, it will start working in-game. So now we can move on to cockpit. And cockpit uh, is basically your gauges. So we're talking about what your gauges are going to read, your fuel quantity. We want the gauge to start at zero, you know, your low limit, your green start, your green end, your yellow, all the way to high and max. And it has tons of stuff here. Um, and like I said, it keeps going this way. And what's really cool about this is it has pretty much everything in here for every aircraft. So even if it's not going to be here and you don't assign anything to it, I mean, it's not going to matter. It's just what the sim's going to be reading. And if you want to make a gauge for it and start connecting these sim var variables to it, uh, you can do that. So, for example, I don't think I'm going to have, you know, let's see what they got here. Probably not going to have a, uh, a torque gauge on this thing. So I could leave these at zero. I could put it in there if I want to do it for future use. But uh, these are all just the variables that your gauge will be reading. And now we move on to cameras. And cameras is really cool because you can make custom cameras here. Um, as you can tell, there's a lot to come with this thing as is, especially that pilot camera. And so let's go ahead and drop into cockpit view again. Now, as you can see here, <laughs> this view sucks major. So uh, I'm not quite sure. I haven't looked around this model in the interior, believe it or not. So I'm not quite sure if this thing even has anything in it. Looks like we are sitting in a wing. Um, so what we can do is we can drop down. We can probably move forward. I'm assuming we are back further than we should be. Uh, so we go down here to initial position. And once again, you got your Z, your X, your Y. So we're gonna drop down to probably a negative one. Um, let's go zero to see where that is and we're going to move that to probably positive one we'll see where this places us but if you save and resync here it's going to change this whole view of the initial pilot so all right looks like we <laughs> moved above the aircraft um, 
instead of in the cabin. So these are numbers that you're going to be definitely wanting to play with over and over again. And you can change those for everything all the way down to the gauges. So, you know, you can have it focus sp specifically on the MFD. You can create one and have it focus on the GPS panel if you got GPS panel on there. Um, you can just add a bunch of cameras and this is something that's really nice for the community too if you find a plane that you really like and you don't like the cameras you can go ahead and open it up in a aircraft editor and start messing with the cameras and then export that new camera CFG and start using that for yourself so if you don't like your original cameras that came with a community model or the original model you can change those um, and then there's a bunch of points in here which uh, you know talk about what kind of point is it you know, origin does it have? Is it a virtual origin, a world object, a fixed? You know, so there's certain things you can start doing with there here. Like, does it have lens flare? Um, a lot of these I don't really touch much because uh, the default settings are probably about where they should be. Uh, but you can really delve into these things. So I'm not quite sure what a lot of these do because I haven't touched with these um, quite a bit. Um, but you can also change. You know what kind of view it has, a fixed chase, a flat chase, flyby camera. So you can really add some uh, variety to these to make them really nice for those people that love those photo opportunities. So really that, that we, we, we pretty much covered from general to cameras. So we're, we're almost done for today's live stream. It's been about four to five minutes and I thank you guys for uh, really sticking with it. But before we go, let's go ahead and restart the sim here. And uh, see how she flies and she should fly much differently um, than the first time we, we, we did it because she's going to have one engine she's lighter the wings are a little differently and then I can really show you this aerodynamics module which we kind of skipped during the middle of the tutorial okay now that we're back let's go ahead and she's ready to fly once again uh, I didn't fix the camera so we'll go ahead and go to external view release our parking brakes and uh, let's go ahead and turn sound up here so you can kind of hear what's going on. Now, while we're uh, rolling to a start here, let's go ahead and turn our aerodynamics view on. This will show you what I'm talking about. So you can kind of see how that played in with uh, our um, our uh, geometry and how our wings are appropriately scanned now from uh, this side to this side they're not too long and what that's going to do is it's going to show the air airflow and the drag so right now as you can tell uh, we don't have enough lift we uh, probably are way too heavy for the single engine so <laughs> let's go ahead and change that uh, pause that We could adjust our weight and balance here to about 3,000 empty weight to probably 2,500. And then let's go to our engine here and let's make this thing a little turbocharge, right? So, uh, um, thrust scalar. Let's give this thing a little bit more thrust than 1.1. 1 .1. We'll give it a 2. Hopefully, this is enough to get us off the ground. But once again, if you're making this with a real aircraft in mind and you're using all the appropriate numbers, obviously that thing's flown before and it should be flying in the sim. Okay, let's go ahead and unpause. And uh, when it restarts in the sim state, it will put your parking brakes back on and uh, basically just drop you dead. So go ahead and do full thrust again every time you save and resync. Turn off your uh, parking brakes and uh, go for it again so hopefully we can get enough thrust here to actually get off the ground which ta-da we can we're a little bit lighter we got a little bit more of a turbo in this thing and uh, as you can see uh, yeah, where'd my aerodynamic view go I'm sorry about that we can start to see exactly how things are playing so right now it looks like we got plenty of um, gravity coming down on the wings or drag and uh, we got some lift in the elevator so this is something that you can start fine-tuning as you do things here um, and this is probably due to the fact that our wings are very skinny we didn't modify that 
uh, you need to span the full area of the wing. Um, but if you look here, I mean, we, we got some flying now, and if you yaw, we don't got the animation yet, but you can see exactly how that drag and the lift starts working on the tail. And uh, we're, we're, we're getting closer to uh, our model being complete. So before the next tutorial starts, um, I'm going to go ahead and tweak as much as I can in this aircraft editor. I know it's going to take much longer than this tutorial uh, has time for and uh, hopefully by the time we get to episode three here and we start working on animations and getting these individual services working in Blender, uh, she'll be flying just like this model would appropriately fly. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in and I uh, hope to see you next time. Thank you.